On this episode of Planting Pit Stops, we're going to meet with an agronomist from Bex Hybrids to learn about how seed corn is developed, and then we'll see how it's planted in Nebraska. We'll also learn about the 2020 monitor system and how that helps you make real-time database decisions while planting to improve your operation. My name is Joey Hennigan. Um, I work as a field agronomist for Bex Hybrids here in the state of Wisconsin. We're currently in Marshall, Wisconsin at my, uh, my farm here. So, so what that entails is mostly helping our dealers and helping our customers uh, for both good and bad troubleshooting, figuring out uh, what to do in terms of hybrid placement, uh, fertility questions, insect management, uh, which hybrid fits this situation the best, um, are conditions fit to plant, what do we do with this soil type, et cetera, et cetera. So just try to be kind of that, that in-field technical support for our dealers and customers. Um, I always liked, I grew up around farming, didn't grow up directly on a farm. My grandparents farmed, grew up in a, a small farming town. And so I always knew I wanted to be around or near farming, so I always had that passion for it. And ended up at college, thought I wanted to be an engineer, um, but wanted to get, honestly, even more hands-on in today's world. And so that's what took me to the more outdoor role of being an agronomist. Um, so I got a degree in crop and soil science and I've worked in the field in a technical agronomist role ever since finishing, finishing school with that. So Bex Hybrids is a, a seed company based in Atlanta, Indiana, uh, family owned and sells across the entire Midwest and really even to the, the Mid-South at this point. They work corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, cover crops, uh, milo, sorghum, um, pretty much the whole, the whole gamut there. Um, a lot of what we do is try to help farmers succeed. That's what we strive to do the most in terms of what we do. Not only is it seed, we do a lot with um, equipment as well in terms of helping farmers get into equipment they need through the Equipment Rewards Program. We have a lot of practical farm research where we test things well beyond even just seed, a lot of management, a lot of products in terms of what is out there, what is best suited to help a farmer succeed in a certain situation. So try to bring a lot of value to the seed buying process with, with more to it than just seed. The corn development process um, really starts with trying to identify what do we need or what do we need to improve upon in our, in our existing lineup. Um, I'll, I'll just reference back to 2018 when tar spot was a new disease in the Midwest. We had some really great products out there that we had never evaluated against that particular disease because it was brand new and they fell completely flat on their face because of this new disease. So that was a quick realization we have a new need, we need to develop some new hybrids to address that need. But with that, it takes every bit of five to seven years, if not more, to truly develop a brand new corn hybrid from a male and a female that come together to make that, that hybrid corn. So it's not the fastest process, it's a lot faster now than it used to be with some new technologies and be able to use the southern hemisphere for using both seasons essentially, but you're still looking at every bit of five years to develop a new, a new corn hybrid that again hopefully addresses a need or improves upon what currently exists in a commercial lineup. So once that hybrid is identified to be grown commercially, it just takes time to increase the amount of male and female seed that's available to be grown for the seed and then grow it in the field, they cross pollinate and that's what creates your hybrid seed corn. So we have a, we have a full lineup from 82 day maturity corn all the way up through 118. I'm not sure of the exact number of hybrids, um, but it's every bit of 50 or 60, 70 plus hybrids. So the reason there's so many Again, we have maturity ranges. The, the further north we work in the United States, you need to have a shorter maturity corn because of the shorter season. And the further south, of course, it's a longer season. Um, but what you really are looking at when you're choosing a hybrid is does it have, if it's a traded hybrid, does it protect against the right range of insects that you're looking to protect against? Does it have the right herbicide protection traits for the chemistries that you use in your geography? And then probably the biggest part of it is the genetics in terms of how does that hybrid respond to its environment? Is it a stress tolerant hybrid that does best on tough soils or drought prone soils that are farmed that way and need to have a hybrid that can handle that kind of stress? Or is it a hybrid that just has ultimate kind of top end yield for the best cream puff, best soils, best management? It can handle all of the groceries being thrown at it and can then give you a great return from it. Um, the, the range of hybrids can pretty much go from, from tough, tough ground type hybrids to the best out there. So understanding what your environment is and then understanding how a certain hybrid will react to that environment is probably the biggest part of hybrid selection and hybrid placement for corn. So when planting corn, first and foremost, when you're putting that seed into the ground, it has to, has to have moisture. So it needs to be in the soil, it needs to have moisture. If it doesn't have moisture, it's just a corn seed laying in, in dry soil. So you need to get into moisture. Typically, we're looking to plant at least two inches deep across almost all the Midwest, further south. Oftentimes it can be even deeper than that to get to uniform moisture. Yeah, this was on a done out here. Wasn't in here last year. So this is an actually a planter setting study. 
So that plant was made it possible. So I've got treatments with excessive downpours, treatments with shallow planting, treatments with uh, the rope cleaners for plowing, treatments with closing wheels or too, too, um, too much pressure on the closing wheels, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I'll show you, I can, I don't have it in front of you, but I can tell. Right here is where we had the row cleaners too aggressive. So you can see kind of there's a trench there. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm curious, you know, it's probably fine now and it probably won't show anything, but like the big rain we just got, if I'd been out here at five in the morning, I might've been able to see water laying in that trench. Yeah. Compared to where I had the row cleaners set normal, you know, you just don't, you don't see near as much of that trench or anything. Once that occurs, um, corn needs about 120 heat units. And that's a, that's a term we use to basically measure how warm it is outside and how we accumulate heat and sunlight um, outside. So 120 heat units in the north can take up to two weeks, but if you're further south, it can be as, as few as four to five days. So once that 120 heat units is, is achieved, that corn plant emerges from the ground with a little, a little shoot, a little seedling, and then it develops from there. Um, again, maturities of corn can range um, from in the 70 day range is the rating all the way up through about 120 day corn. Um, 70 day corn takes significantly fewer days to get to maturity where it creates an ear, dry corn kernels and is mature compared to longer season corn. Um, what we're looking at with that is basically trying to match up, have as, the longest season possible to maximize how much sunlight you get wherever you're at, but it also can't be too long to the point where it doesn't reach maturity before we get cold weather in the fall. We always like to plant early, no matter where you're at, um, but I'm seeing a bigger emphasis on planting at the right time and not putting corn into a condition where it's not set up to be successful. So we've actually seen soybeans being a little less sensitive to let's say adverse planting conditions or poor planting conditions. So oftentimes we'll see uh, customers plant soybeans first or at least a, a portion of their soybeans when conditions are close to correct uh, but not quite perfect. And so then we get corn, I see it being putting in a tighter window. We, we're, we're equipping ourselves now to be able to plant faster so that when we have those perfect conditions that are still early, we can get the majority of the corn crop planted. And again, not to abuse the soybeans, but they can just take a little, a little more uh, abuse out in the field, whether it's early or late. And so that's what I've been seeing, not necessarily trending wholeheartedly earlier, but just a tighter window on the early side. So one thing I look at when we're kind of validating how we did planting or how that hybrid emerged or looking at emergence and vigor is just going out there early season, you know, VE through V1 to V2, just to see how uniform that corn stand is. After that point, you can still see if it's not uniform, but it kind of blends together. So if you do catch it early enough, you can see pretty big differences if you have poor emergence, whether it's caused by, again, air pockets from poor planting or poor soil conditions, or sometimes, you know, some hybrids just don't emerge as well. Or if you got adverse weather after planting that affected, you know, the whole field, one thing you can do is a flag test where you go out every 12 to 24 hours and just put a flag when you can see an emerged corn plant. What I'm looking for here, so this is a flag test. So as these plants are emerging, what I'm doing is looking for them when they're tiny. I'll put a little flag, so that says day one right there. I'll put a flag next to that plant to mark that it was emerging on the first day. And here's an example, this one says day two. So that plant was, you know, 12 to 24 hours later than the rest of the plants that were day one. So this is one day to kind of, one way to evaluate and validate how, how well your, your seed is emerging, but also how well you did planting. Um, if you did a good job with both, you get a situation like this where you generally get all your plants up within one to two days. I'll leave these flags all year, and then I'll actually come and manually pick the ears off of these plants uh, to help basically put a number to, is there any difference in the ears that were developed from the plants that emerged on day one versus the plants that emerged on day two. Um, if you have a really poor result, let's say you get a five-day spread, you'll very often see a big difference in, in those plants from day one, be nice, big, you know, well-developed ears, good yield, and day five plants, you'll be lucky if you even have uh, grain on the kernel, grain on the ear. So um, that's, that's one way to kind of validate a lot of parts of the early season development, planting, seed, soil conditions, everything, how well you got those plants emerged, and then what does that translate to in terms of ear development and yield at the end of the season. Now that we've learned how different corn hybrids are developed, let's meet a grower in Nebraska who's growing them. AJ Lindbergh, uh, Stromsburg, Nebraska. We uh, raise soybeans, seed corn, and commercial corn. Third generation farmer. My grandpa started it back in early 1900s, and dad continued, and my brother and I kept, kept it going. We grow seed corn for Corteva. 
Uh, this particular field is all the same time. It's three different populations, uh, 39,839 and half rates on the outside rows. Seed corn, they come out, they do wheel pulling and tasseling, and they harvest it for us, so that part's nice. So how long have you guys been doing seed corn then? Um, I would say about 10 years, I think. Somewhere in there. Sometimes you plant male first, yeah. then you plant all the female later. It's different every year. Yeah. How often is it like this where you're planting them all together? Not very often. Okay. Uh, old corn ground, we ridge till. Old bean ground, it's more no-till. Just go right in through there. Uh, old corn ground, we got a root stumper. Pulls all the stalks out and uh, works pretty slick. This planter makes a heck of a difference. Never know with winter, or spring weather. We got wet conditions this year and not planted for the last three weeks. Last year, we were done by now, but the ground is really hard and really dry. This year's a totally different story. Having a good planter and being confident what it's planting and not having to go back and check all the time, make sure the row's not screwed up. Now, if you can see, I got three different populations yep. there. That's the outside two, and okay. that's the other female, and that's the, or that's the other male, and that's the other female. Yeah. Every operation's different. Uh, we try to wait till it's more ideal for temperature of the soil, and we waited a little bit this year. Maybe we should get kept going, but everything we have in so far is looking good. And we got two, three weeks of rain, so now we're just getting back to it. Uh, ideal soil temperature is one thing, but there's guys that go in early and it turns out all right, but for optimal yield, kind of go by our crop consultant and see what he says and try to get it in as early as you can. Uh, our particular planter is the MF VS 1630. Basically, that's kind of what we've been running before. Uh, the stack fold it works out good in the hills and we've got some tight turning around on corners and stuff. Full type fits other people. We like the stack. We're probably 90% irrigated. Put our starter fertilizer in and furrow there. Uh, we run some Dawn uh, furrow openers in front, clear the trash away and we got Delta Force on the planter that gives it good optimal planting depth and everything. Works pretty good. We uh, started using Climate View and you can see exactly where any problem in the field might have been, whether ground's hard and precision is spot on. Oh, well, this is our second year running it. I know the stand last year was really good with this planter compared to our other planter, so. Definitely that benefit. Oh, once you got it set, pretty straightforward. Don't have to mess around with much so far. It all starts with planting though. Jason Lee and I are gonna wrap up this episode by talking about the 2020 monitor system and the different features that can improve your operation. The planter pass is so important. We wanna know in real time everything that's going on and so that we can make sure that every seed is placed uh, properly. And so we do this with the 2020. The 2020 monitor system allows farmers to achieve better insights in real time. And so it is kind of the brains behind all, this, all the whole operation. It's where all the technology from the planter feeds into, into the tractor cab, allowing the grower to have all that information at his fingertips. Jason, why is it really important to have that real time data? Well, I think you hit on it a little bit already. And you know, it's, it's really, what are we doing with this planter pass? We're really setting the stage for the entire crop cycle, right? And that's what's really important about us because we really only have one chance to get it right. And so as I'm going across that field, you know, I want to make sure and have the confidence that I am planting and dropping one seed at a time. I'm always maintaining consistent playing depth and all those other things that, you know, all go, come together to make that a, a perfect uh, planting operation. I want to have confidence that I'm making the right adjustments on that planter. And, and really with the 2020, like you mentioned, it, it's giving the operator and the grower that data visually in the cab. You know, that way I can look at my Delta Force information, for example, and see, okay, maybe I'm losing too much ground contact. I need to increase my downforce pressure 
or maybe I have too much weight on my gauge wheels and it's a little tacky out there so I need to lighten those up or or maybe my singulation is just a little bit off I need to slow down because the field conditions just aren't allowing for me to go so you know whatever the case may be I'm a data guy every decision I make in life uh, you know, I need to, to look at that data in order to have confidence to move forward really it's no different with the 2020 as we provide that data we're measuring that in real time so that way you can make the adjustments now and not, you know, after the fact when yeah. it's when it's too late and the corn's already up and yeah. you're like, well, you know, what do I do now? Yeah. Um, you know, so we're trying to just make those decisions in real time and have confidence. So I guess with, with that in mind, you know, Forrest, talk to us a little bit more about the 2020 and, and how all of our features can just all feed into that system. Yeah, this I'll say on a few other benefits. So yeah, master version of planners come with the 2020 as our brains behind the scenes. And so a couple of great things about that is not only do you have the real time data, it also collects all that data so that you can make year over year compared to yield maps and you can take the data from planting, look at yields and make a better decision for the next year. Um, it's also, you know, very tractor agnostic, right? You're not tied into the tractor system. It's a standalone monitor. There's no subscription or anything, right? So out of the box, you get all the functionality. Whether you just have the say VSET, V-Drive and Delta Force information in there, or you have the suite of precision planning uh, technologies, you just have to bolt those on to the planner and plug them in. You don't have to rewire your planner, right? The, the architecture, the backbone for all that information from the planner to the 2020 is already there from the factory. And so it really allows growers not only to make better decisions in real time, also feature decisions, and also gives them so much flexibility and modularity with their planner in the future as their operation changes or grows. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.